You know, we, we have put ourselves in a position where we are able to bless people and man, I, I wake up and that's my prayers are so gratitude driven just being, man, thank you so much, God, for a roof and for food and mm -hmm. for health. And, you know, we're debt free. We don't have to worry about any of that. And so for me, that's, that's what drives me every morning. And, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for not only my wife, cause she's my hero for me. Uh, of what she's done. And, and, you know, I, I just look up to her and she's my best friend by far, but my grandma as well, because my grandma, I'm just thankful for her prayers because if it wasn't for her prayers, I don't believe that I would be here. Welcome to Sheila's Take, your go-to podcast for thoughtful insights on love, faith, health, fitness, relationships, and navigating today's challenges through a spiritual perspective. Join me, Sheila Dunbar, as we explore various aspects of life with a mindful and godly approach. Tune in for engaging discussions on all things meaningful and transformative. Welcome back to Sheila Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Sheila Dunbar. And today I have a special guest, Mr. Eric Allen. Eric is a man of integrity, work ethic, and resilience from overcoming a challenging childhood to finding faith and love. Eric's journey is a testament to the power of perseverance. As an entrepreneur, an MMA fan, and a creator of the top-rated MMA podcast, Eric is not only building a successful career, but also giving back to the community and veterans through organizations like Higher Heroes USA. So join me today as I welcome Eric Allen to Sheila's Take Podcast. Welcome, Eric. How are you? Oh, uh, Sheila, I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for being on your show. It's truly an honor to be here with you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. And I appreciate you because I know I, I know you are very, very busy. So I, I just want to thank you for that. Let's just jump right in, if you don't mind. Sure. Can share your journey. I know you had some adversity. You had a turbulent past, a broken home. I know you battle addiction. Are you face incarceration and bankruptcy. How did all of that get you where you are today as a successful podcaster and entrepreneur? Yeah, it gave me grit and resilience for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, learned my lesson a lot through that. And there was about a 10 year period of my life where I just walked, I would say, not away from Jesus for sure, but definitely walked in the worldly desires that I had. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I played that victim card that you know it's it's woe is me and this is where i come from and nothing's yeah, ever going to yeah. change right uh, and it wasn't until i was invited to a church event uh when i was not walking with the lord mm -hmm. uh, a, a gal had invited me to church to a church event and i went there and i it was at that event that i really started to realize that god had been protecting me my entire life you know at that time i was about 24 years old and i'm 44 now mm -hmm. uh, but i've never broken a bone i've never had a stitch uh you know I, yeah. it, it just Everything that I've done in my life, there was many times where I, I should have died because I just yeah. did dumb things and God had been protecting me, but I wasn't ready to give my life up at that point. It was actually a month later, it was Easter 2004. Mm -hmm. I woke up after a night of partying uh, and literally in my buddy's basement surrounded by probably 10 or 12 other guys, uh, they were all passed out. And, and I just felt God saying, dude, you're going down a path that's going to end your life real quick. Wow. And so I decided in that moment for me, to give my life to Christ right then and there. And I quit cold turkey, drugs, drinking cigarettes, everything in that moment, uh, gave it all up, gave my life to Jesus, called that girl up who invited me to the church event and said, hey, thanks for inviting me to church. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll see at the store. Um, I was working at Starbucks and, and that's okay. where we had met. And uh, so I left her voicemail. And uh, a month later, we went on our first date and we've been married for 19 years this year. Well, congratulations, congratulations. Yeah. What now, let me ask you this question. Were you always, um, did you have a basis in, in Christ or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, did, did you have, were you ever raised with a faith or this just came upon you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I did grow up going to church. Mm -hmm. um, I went with my mom and dad who attended a church that my mom's mom and dad went to. And, okay. and so, uh, but I was the kid at the time where, you know, we would go to Sunday school and then I would excuse myself from Sunday class and go to the bathroom and then pull out my GI Joes out of my pocket and then just never return. And for some yeah. reason, no one ever came to find me. So um, mm -hmm. that's my, my take of growing up in church. 
However, my dad's mom, who just who will be 90 this year, Ooh. is an amazing woman of prayer. Yeah. And she's been praying for me my entire life. And she still gets up, reads the Bible every morning, and tries to, she's almost at a hundred verses that she's memorized. She's been doing this for like 30 years, trying to memorize verses. And uh, I think it was her prayers that had guided me through. And still to this day, she still prays for all 55 of us grandkids and great grandkids. Wow. Now, so. Look at that. Look at that. That's a, yeah. that's a, they say, they, they, they talk about uh, a praying mother, but it's nothing also like a praying grandmother, right? Yeah, for sure. You know? For you sure. Know? Yeah. Um, now you have over 18 years of sobriety, right? Mm, I do. And a successful yeah. marriage. How do you maintain your commitment to self improvement and personal development? You know, while doing, while managing the responsibilities of being a podcaster, a speaker, and an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's all Jesus, man. I I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus. There, there's, there's so many times where. I could just, you know, get distracted and go and sit down and watch Netflix yeah. all day and things like that. And I've been working remote since 2015. So there's a lot of distractions mm -hmm. yeah. in the house. And, um, but I think for me, I have to have standards. And for me, I also have to have gratitude. So when I wake mm -hmm. up every morning, literally the first thing that I say out of my mouth is, is thank you, Jesus, for another day to see and hug and hold my Ooh, family. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. That's my, my goal. Number one is to wake up. So there I've accomplished goal. Number one right there. <laughs> And then I jump out of bed, and I make my bed, and there's two goals that I've accomplished in 15 seconds. So I'm yeah. already starting to fire on all cylinders for my brain. Like, I've got two wins stacked already. We're going to yeah. win this day. And the non-negotiable for me is immediately come up here to the office. I turn on some worship music, and I go straight to prayer. Oh, and for me, yeah. the prayer is very gratitude-driven because I'm just so thankful for what I have and what Jesus and God has blessed me with. And every day continue to bless that. And even days where... There were some valleys where things weren't happening right or how I wanted them to, but I'm just mm -hmm. like, all right, God, this is your plan, right? I'm, I'm going to sit back and let you do your thing. So um, the way to balance it for me is, is waking up early, but really having those non-negotiables and those standards of spending time in prayer with Jesus mm -hmm. every morning. And that helps set the tone for the entire day. Now, and, I was going to ask you that, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. interrupt. Go ahead. No, you're good. Uh, I would just say. I get up early because my family, they they sleep in a little bit longer than I mm -hmm. do. That allows me to have that solo time with just Jesus and me. Yeah. So see, and that was my that was my next question because I know you 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 have a, a morning routine and you particularly waking up between like four and four thirty, uh what, five five, six days a week, right? Yeah, typically. And, uh, yeah. and and that's that's contributed to your success and productivity, correct? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm waking up early. I'm hitting that, that prayer time and mm -hmm. do a little workout in the morning, but then that allows me to just jump right into the day. And, and, and I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm one of those people too, because I, I, I'm, I'm up around, I want to say around 4, 15, 4, 30 and I'm doing the same thing. Nice. And it's right. It, it's like, it, it's that, it's that your, it's your time to, to, to commune with God, to meditate, to, to listen, you know, to hear him. Yeah. And then I'm off to the gym, you know, yeah. and by the, and when I'm coming home it, it, from, you know, from the gym, it's time we have, my family's getting up, getting up for work, you know, and right. I, I'm like you, I work from home. Yeah. So, um, but I, I definitely understand that. And I, I, I know that, that when you, when you start your mornings off praising and giving God glory, that day is going, it's going to be awesome. You know, huge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, have you. Have you ever thought in the in your journey, um, have you ever woken up and, and thought, well, maybe uh, of giving up or, you know, mm -hmm. just this is not going to be, I mean, during the time you were going through the issues you were going through, did you ever think of, there was a time where you was like, you know what, it, it's, I, I, I can't do this or give up? Yeah, I mean, prior to me giving my life to Christ, mm -hmm. I really didn't think I'd make it to age 40. I just was living this life of I'm going to party this thing up and, and yeah. live as hard as I can right now. And I'm sure that that will come into play at some point down the road now. But I mean, in my early years, I, I, I just never thought that I would make it to age 40, never yeah. thought that I was going to get married, never thought that I would find the love of my life. Um, you know, and God just lines things up, you know, unexpectedly, you yeah. know, it's a suddenly that he changes. Right. And so, um, for me, it was that that girl that invited me 
to church for four bucks, right? And then, you know, things like that. But I've never had a moment since giving my life to Christ where I just thought, man, I- I'm going to give up on this thing. Yeah. And I, I never had suicidal thoughts, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought like, man, I'm going to live this life as hard as I can. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to just have this low paying job and, and not be successful, but I'm going to just party it up and I'll live this life. Cause I worked in the music business for a bit mm-hmm. and, and loved it. It was fun. It was party time, but it, there was a moment. I remember being working for universal records at a concert and I, I was in my early twenties and I saw a gal there who was in her thirties. So certainly not old, older mm-hmm. than I was at that point. Right. Right. And I remember looking at her going, I don't want to be her age and still doing this five nights. Really? And it was like, that was the moment yeah. I just remember it so clearly. That was the real moment where my eyes started open. I'm like, God's got a bigger plan for me than I even yeah. thought. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now, you have a podcast. Yeah. Top rated MA podcast. And you give back to community and veterans. Well, what inspired you to combine these passions and create a platform with a meaningful impact? Yeah. So I actually have two podcasts the Top Rated MMA show and then the Eric Allen show. The Eric Allen, um, right. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so Top Rated MMA was started with an apparel company in 2012. Mm-hmm. My wife and I started it and during the days of tap out and, and we thought, well, hey, we'll, we'll try to get our foot in the door. I'm not a fighter. I like I, the sport. I love to watch it. I respect mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. fighters, uh, but really wanted to, to understand their mindset. So I started MMA, uh, Top Rated MMA podcast, just asking fighters like, why do you want to get punched in the face? You know, and, and, and that <laughs> translated over to entrepreneurship because entrepreneurs, we get punched in the face all the time, but we keep yeah. going. Right. And so yeah. I, I translated that over. I, I did the Top Rated MMA show uh, until 2021. And then I did the Eric Allen show from 2019 uh, until now. Episode mm-hmm. 260 just dropped last week of, of wow. the Eric Allen show. Yeah. Um, but uh, I really wanted to talk with people and share their stories because I believe that everybody has a story. Yes. And and some people can't resonate with Ed Milet or John Gordon or David Meltzer, who have been on my show, mm-hmm. that lost $100 million, right? But people can resonate with their story of comeback, of fighting through the adversity and yeah. realizing that there's a bigger plan for their life than what they've been given or mm-hmm. handed or what they feel like, right? And once we realize it, our past and other people's opinions of us doesn't define our future. That's when we can step into our purpose and start making an impact. Ooh, and yeah. so for me, I wanted to share the stories of entrepreneurs, world changers, success-minded people. And I've had some guests on my show that were of faith and some were not, but they all have these super impactful shows, mm-hmm. or I mean, stories that I wanted to share. And so I think podcasting for me has become this, this purpose because yeah. I look at it like, yeah, there's great relationships and partnerships and collaborations that come out of it. But for me, it's legacy. I wish that I could go back three, four generations mm-hmm. deep and hear my grandfather's story from him, but I can't do it. But I can do that for future generations down my tribe. Wow. And so for me, podcasting is a legacy thing. How did you establish yourself in, because, you know, podcasting is very competitive. Yeah. How did you establish yourself and 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 what advice do you, would you give for us? aspiring podcasters. Yeah, I would say, look, uh, if you want to share your story, just start. And I, I get that's the thing that everybody says, just get right. started. Just start. Just start it. I had no idea what I was doing when I started. I was in a walk-in closet. I had a hundred foot extension that ran behind the bed into the closet so I could plug in my computer at, you know, no lighting, bad microphone. Like I just wanted to have a conversation. And over time I got yeah. better, but I had recorded about a hundred episodes of my podcast and somebody said, well, how can I listen to it on Apple? And I was like, what the heck is that? I didn't even know what Apple podcast was. Oh, okay. I, I was, I was recording a show and uploading to YouTube and sharing that link out to people and saying, this mm-hmm. is my podcast. Right. No idea. So once I heard that, I just started deep diving in. How does this podcast thing work? Mm-hmm. And so I spent hours on YouTube mm-hmm. and Google mm-hmm. and setting everything up. Uh, but more importantly, how I made myself stand out was I was just consistent. The key to being successful in podcasting is, number one, don't quit. Because 90% of podcasters don't make us episode seven. And so if you can get through that, right? And then also record five to eight episodes before you release your first Mm -hmm. one. Uh, Because then you've got a cue, right? Uh, But then the key is being consistent. So my show drops every Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific. And over time, your listeners are going to start to want that or expect that it drops Mm -hmm. on that, right? So if you're all over the place on different dates, you're going to lose um, listeners, right? right? But if right. you're consistent, you can do that. 
And I think those are the, the things that have made me stand out is I've been podcasting now since 2017. And my show has wow. come out at least one to two times a week ever since. And uh, the, the biggest thing you can do to grow your show is be consistent, but also be a guest on other people's shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For, oh, wow, wow. Let's, I know you mentioned that you, you, you were hitting your 19th anniversary, marriage anniversary, yeah. right? Again, congratulations. Thank you. Um, how do you and your family work together to break the cycles of addiction, of aggression, abuse? How, uh, how, do, you, how do you work together with that? Yeah. Uh, it's so huge. It, really, it, it, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus. And, and I just want to make sure that, that people realize that the glory goes to him. I, I mean, my, mm -hmm. my wife came from a broken home as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when we came into marriage, we didn't know what a good marriage looked like. We knew what we didn't want, but we didn't know how to have a good marriage. Mm -hmm. And 19 years being married, not every year is rainbows and sunshine, mm -hmm. right? Like we've had to have some deep, tough conversations yeah. about things, about past hurts that still affected us as adults, right? And and we've had to make different difficult choices to kind of cut some people out from our lives that mm -hmm. were kind of this toxic people that caused stress and anxiety in our marriage. Yeah. And so I think for us, and for me, I'm I'm always trying to be better as a better husband and a better father. But you know, I want to I want to read books on better communication, mm -hmm. uh, drawing close to God. You know, my wife she homeschools our kids, and the first hour of homeschool every day is my wife just deep diving in the Bible with our kids. Oh, and wow! It's amazing for me to walk downstairs and I'm getting coffee, and my kids are worshiping Jesus and 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 deep in the Word. And I it's so my wife is the definitely the one who's building this foundation. But then as a family, we pray, we pray at every dinner, we pray at night, we pray in the morning. Uh, you know, we, we, we spend time in prayer when we're getting ready to go on the road. My kids have seen me and my wife argue. They've seen us uh, make up and dance in the kitchen and uh -huh. slow kiss, you know, uh, kissing and dancing all uh -huh. the right. So they see it all. We don't really hide that. There's some conversations, obviously, we have to hide from the kids at, at some point. But right, right, right. they've seen us have disagreements. They've seen us get heated. They've seen us calm down. And, but they've also seen us take ownership of when mm -hmm. we make mistakes. Yeah. So when I mess up as a dad, I pull my kids aside and go, man, I screwed up. I, I, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have said that, yeah. right? And so they see that. And, and I think that's how we're able to do life together uh, as Jesus as the center point. Mm -hmm. um, you because, win. You're winning. Yeah. You're winning. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And, and I think that's how we break the chains of abuse, addiction, rejection, mm -hmm. and um, you know all of that and divorce because you know, here we are 19, married, 19 years being married, but both of our parents have been married and divorced five, six times, you know? So, you know, we're, we're, we are deciding to do that. When we said, I do, we meant it. And mm -hmm. there's been, like I said, some tough, difficult situations and, or we've had to just have some, you know, uh, deep talks, but we work through it and we keep going. That, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, you, you hear people a lot talk about um, how they, you know, God has 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 changed their lives and 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 done miracles. And I I I had a podcast earlier, and one of the things I was I was saying to the the lady is that you know we don't realize how you know we're looking for like the the parting of the Red Sea and those type of miracles, but you know in, in this day and age to have a marriage you're married 19 i'm i'm going on 24 this year come on that's and, awesome and you know that's it's awesome. like you know you it, it's like it's a blessing yeah. you know the miracle in these days to have marriages like this because people are breaking up for the littlest things and mm -hmm. and the more you put god and jesus in the center he's the center everything's going to work out, you know, yeah, and, and, yeah. and that's, and, and that's what's so important in people's lives. And, and it's such a blessing to hear you say that, um, for my listeners to hear you say that, you know, and, and when you have a family that you're praising God and, and you're doing the right things, it, this is the, this is the fruit of it, you know, yeah. evidence. Um, how did you get involved in, uh, the organi organization, Higher Heroes USA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got one call when I was 18 years old to join the military, and I was probably stoned at the time and, mm -hmm. and said some choice words that I should have said and um, never got another call back from a recruiter. I, wow. I don't know why. But uh, mm -hmm. so I, I basically at that point uh, continued down the path of, of 
being addicted to drugs and all of that. Mm -hmm. As I got older, I started to realize the mistake that I made yeah, and I kick yeah. myself every day for not joining the military. But I have so much respect and honor for first responders, for military, mm -hmm. for teachers, mm -hmm. you know, and so Hire Heroes USA, it started by a guy named Brian Stan, who used to be in the UFC. And when okay. I started Top Rate MA, he was a UFC fighter and I was following him and I checked out Hire Heroes and they're an organization that helps military men and women with job training to help them get job placement in the force when they get out of the force, mm -hmm. out of the military. How do they get civilian jobs? And so they give them training, they give them free training on site and all of this stuff. And job placement is an amazing organization. And so I wanted to give back to those guys because I truly believe in number one in, in our military, but number two, being able to help train them on how to get back into the yeah. civilian life, because that's a really hard transition for a lot of them. And so I'm very patriotic. My, I, you know, my wife, my kids, if we mm -hmm. see somebody in uniform, whether it's first yeah. responder or military, we immediately go up and say, man, thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so I just want to be able to honor them as much as I can and, and be able to give back when we can. And, and this flag that's behind me was given to me by a company called Combat Flags. Mm -hmm. You know, they sent this to me and, and I've used it as my backdrop for many, many years now as a podcast. And um, I just always want to be able to give back and, and just show appreciation to military first responders. Yeah, well, I, you know, that that's a blessing, you know, coming from a daughter who's, whose father was in the Navy and the Army and the brother wow. who's a Marine. Both have passed on, but I, I, I thank you for honoring and, you know, doing what you're doing. You know, it's a blessing and I, I appreciate you. Let me ask you this question. And sure. I kind of answered it earlier. You, you, okay. know, you It's like you, you, you're jumping ahead. You, you jump oh, ahead sorry, sorry. Question. But that, well, that's God. It's okay. Grateful for. Oh man. I love this question. <laughs> I, um. I, I'm grateful that I can wake up every day. Yeah. Number one, but um, number two, I'm, I'm grateful that we are a, we're all healthy. You know, my yeah. wife, and my kids, we're healthy. Um, we have a roof over our heads. Mm -hmm. We're debt free. Um, mm. You know, we we have put ourselves in a position where we are able to bless people. And man, I I wake up and that's my prayers are so gratitude driven. Just being man, thank you so much, God, for a roof and for food and mm -hmm. for health. And, you know, we're debt free. We don't have to worry about any of that. And so for me, that's, that's what drives me every morning. And, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for not only my wife, because she's my hero for me uh, of what she's done. And, and you know, I, I just look up to her and she's my best friend by far, but my grandma as well, because my grandma, I'm just yeah. thankful for her prayers, because if it wasn't for her prayers, I don't believe that I would be here. Wow. Wow. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. I I want to I I want to thank you because you are I, again you are definitely um, a testament to the loving the grace the mercy that God can give to any and everyone you know yeah I see because um, I follow your podcast you Eric the Eric I follow your podcast you know thank you and, thank you and uh, you know I I love what you're doing and and I, I employ my listeners, my audience to to definitely go on and 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 subscribe to the Eric Allen show. It's on YouTube. Um, and you know, you you are blessing people with with your message. and um, I appreciate you, you know. Um, if anyone needs to get in contact with you or how how can they get in contact with you? Yeah. So my website is ericallenmedia.com. It's just E-R-I-K-A-L-L-E-N then media.com. Uh, I appreciate the shout out for YouTube. I, I try to stay very active on YouTube as mm -hmm. much as I can. Uh, but probably the best way to get a hold of me is through my website, the contact form, or I, I'm probably most active on Instagram. Okay. So if you have questions, they can shoot me a DM on there. Uh, I respond to every comment and every DM that comes my way. So I, I like to be able to connect and communicate with folks. And what's your Instagram? Um, um it's just Eric, E-R-I-K, and then G, like my middle initial G, Allen. So Eric G. Allen is the, okay. the handle on Instagram. Okay. Well, I thank you. I thank you so much, Mr. Eric Allen. Blessings to you, your wife, your family. And also, um, again, congratulations on that 19th wedding anniversary. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Such an honor to be here, Sheila. I, I Look, I've been on 
200 podcasts and I so enjoyed this one thank for sure. You. So I really appreciate it. You know, I, I thank you. And, you know, um, I am, this is my, um, uh, well, I, I, my third season going into my fourth season and, uh, I'm going to share with you that God put it on my heart to do this. And it, I always like, you, you know, what you had said earlier, I had episodes already written that I had written on my, my first season and, yeah. and I hesitated to put them out for various reasons sure. and God just, you know, God and a friend told me, just do it do it well she said yeah. do it afraid and i'm like you know what god you're pushing me you're pushing me and i just i've done it and i haven't stopped since so so amazing you know um and i i want to bring as many people th to the goodness of god and how he's in so many of our lives and the things yeah. he does even if we don't know you know i've i and like you i've had people who who were not saved on my show mm -hmm. but when they tell their story God has said, God is in it, you know, yeah. even they, they may not realize it, but God, God is in there because you, you, he got you through yeah. and I thank you. I thank you so much, Eric. And I appreciate you. And again, make sure that you check out Eric Allen's YouTube channel, his podcast, and you can hit him up on at Instagram at Eric G Allen. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Until next time, remember to embrace the journey, build lasting connections, and step boldly into all that life has in store for you. I'm your host, Sheila Dunbar. Blessings to you.